Detective Simmons here. I'm sorry, I'm not at a liberty to discuss the murders with anyone. We have uh, the suspect in custody, and the chief is going to be making a statement to the press as soon as possible. Until then, that's all the information I can give you. Sorry. Sir? Chief Murdo just walked in. He wants you to brief him? Send him in. Look, I've got to go. All right. Do you have the files ready yet? Chief will be here soon. He's going to want to see them. Here are the files of the two victims. So young. Great lives ahead of him. And here's the file on him. Who? Who do you think? You're the cause of all this mayhem. Maxwell Edison, 18 years old. What the fuck is going on around here? The press is going crazy outside. They're grabbing at the bit to get the cause of this bloodbath. I mean, Jesus Christ, can't we keep a lid on anything around here? What's the report? There's our guy. Him? He's a goddamn kid. They get younger every day, sir. What's the story on him? Maxwell Edison, born March 11th, 1992 in Richmond, Virginia, son of Bernard Edison and Heather Hamilton. Father worked as an economic advisor for the senator while the mother stayed at home. As far as we know, they were a regular American family. Maxwell graduated from Jefferson High School and was named valedictorian. Last year, he was accepted into Harvard University and was majoring in the medical arts to become a neurosurgeon. Two days ago on the night of August 3rd, 2011 at 8.17 p.m., Edison was arrested and charged with murder in the first degree. I guess the perfect life wasn't so perfect after all. I already don't like the sound of this kid. Perfect family, prosperous life ahead of him. I mean, what the hell drives a person to take the life of another? Who were the victims? Well, first we have Joan Fisher, born August 20th, 1992 in Boston, Massachusetts. She was studying at Harvard also with a major in pataphysics. What the fuck is pataphysics? Pataphysics is the science of imaginary solutions. Basically, it's about giving symbolic attributes to the properties of everyday objects. Well, thanks for the science lecture, Professor. Can we get back to the case? Like I was saying, Fisher was murdered in her own home on August 3rd, 2011 at around 8 p.m. She died from severe blows to the head. Hello, White. Simmons. How are you this fine evening? Oh, uh, you know, same old, same old. What do we have here? Here. Miss Joan Fisher. 18 years old. TOD around 8 p.m. last night. Cause of death was blows to the head. By a blunt object. Most likely metal. Murder weapon? I'm guessing some sort of hammer of sorts. She's near the door. There's not much splatter. Murder was probably contained in this area. No signs of a struggle. It was a forced entry. None that I could see. She must have gone to the door, see who was there, and then... Well, you know the rest. Who found her? Girl's mother, Leslie Fisher. Single mom, too. Said she was home when the murder took place. Heard a scream and ran to see what happened. So, Miss Fisher, can you please explain to me what you were doing the night the murder took place? Um, yes. I was watching TV in the living room. We just had dinner together, and uh, Joan went upstairs to get ready for her date. She was going out with someone that night? Uh, yes. Uh, a boy from school, somebody she'd met in a science lab. And what was this boy's name? Did she mention it? Um, Maxwell, I, th I think. I don't know. Thank you. Um, was your daughter... Was your daughter, like, a social butterfly? Did she go out a lot? Did she have a lot of friends? Oh, no. I, well, she, she had friends, but she normally didn't go out. She was very kept to herself. Never had a boyfriend. Uh, she'd rather stay home and study. Thank you for your time, Miss Fisher. I realize this must be a very difficult time for you. All right, he was going to pick her up that night. He must have done it. Well, unfortunately, the mother didn't see who killed her daughter. Shit. What about this second victim, Miss Sophie Thomas? 
Age 35, born in New York, New York. She was a professor at Harvard University, youngest of the staff, but leading researcher in her field. She was found dead in her classroom yesterday morning by the janitor. Coroner said that the time of death was around 5 p.m. Cause of death was blows to the head, just like our first victim, except this time she was attacked from behind. Jesus, how does this kid come into all this? Well, here's what we've got. After the first victim's murder, the police responded to a 911 call from the Fisher residence. Upon arriving at the scene of the crime, they found a Mr. Maxwell Edison walking down the same street, covered in blood and holding a hammer. They took him into custody. I then interviewed friends of the victim one and the suspect about a date they were supposed to go on. They told me that a few days before the murder, Maxwell had asked out young Joan to dinner on Friday. Hmm. What's the connection to the teacher? Both victim one and the suspect were in Miss Thomas' social sciences class, along with many of the friends I talked to. Apparently, there was an incident on the day of the first murder. Mr. Edison, why are you distracting Miss Fisher from the lesson? Why are you not paying attention? Do I need to remind you that your midterm is next week and it's worth 35% of your mark? You're not in a really great position, Mr. Edison. Your GPA has gone down significantly in the last couple weeks. So I suggest that you pay attention. Why don't you come see me after class and I'll see what I can do about giving you some help. So you suspect that the kid killed the teacher too? Well, you heard the coroner's report. Blows to the head just like the first victim. This kid wanted revenge for the embarrassment in class. Simmons, you're a great detective. This kid has issues beyond what we could imagine. We can link him to the Fisher girl for sure, but the teacher's based on the testimonies of the friends. If we had harder evidence to connect them to both, that would be great. But without any witnesses to put in front of a judge, it'll be hard to convict them for both murders. Come in! Detective Simmons, we have the results of the blood test that you wanted. What test? We tested for blood on the hammer that the suspect was found carrying. At first we just wanted to find a connection with the Fisher girl, which we found. But then we also found a second blood sample underneath. It belonged to Miss Thomas, the university professor. She used the hammer to kill the teacher after class. And without washing the blood off that night, went and killed the girl at her house. Looks like you got your hard evidence, Simmons. Why did he do it? Dean, I'm here outside the courthouse where something terrible has just occurred. As you know, for the past week it was released that the suspect of the murder of a young Harvard student and professor was brought into custody and today would be his trial. He was committed to 25 years to life on the charge of manslaughter. Just as the trial was wrapping up and he was being let out by police, the suspect broke away and grabbed the murder weapon, a carpenter's hammer, and attacked the judge. Judge Filmer was rushed to the emergency room and is in critical condition. They now have the suspect in high security custody and will be taking him to a maximum security penitentiary. We'll have an update for you at tonight's 7 o'clock news. I'm Elizabeth Stone reporting live in Boston. Thank <laughs> you. 